the manufacturing cost. Let's call that the M, the man cost. <laughs> the cost of being a man. G'day everybody, this is Mupa Sega on behalf of Mupa Corp. Welcome, today is the day we are finally going to have a look at how to build a job tracking system for your manufacturing jobs in the EVE Online that we also enjoy. All right, so keeping track of all the costs that you have accrued to reach your final product and also where is that job up to in terms of its overall process. And that's what job tracking is all about. So an example of, of what I'm talking about here in the tracking part, in the actual crux of it, I've got the job has started. Has it been withdrawn, withdrawal requested, has Odatrick received the goods? And so as you can see, what it, what it means is that I can go for this job of crows, maybe I've only bought the goods, I haven't received the goods in Odatrick yet, I have requested the withdrawal from my componentry elements, but they have not been withdrawn yet, alright, the job has not started but it has indeed started because I've been keeping track of it. Odatrick is received, I have withdrawn the goods and the job has been started. So once this job is completed, I will press finish and it presents all the particulars that I need to know for that job on the right hand side here. I made crows, I made four of them, each one of them cost me 24 million to make. The total costs of all of them was 99 million, which means that when I list them, I can, I, if I want to list this price, then I'll list at 29 million which is about 10% or 20% or something to cover uh, taxes and, and whatever else. But that job has not yet finished. I haven't delivered that job, so I'm gonna delete that. So that's just to give you a taste of where we are going in this tutorial. So I will see you soon. I will close this and we will get started. Alrighty guys, so we are back and we are going to start with this sheet. Now, if you have not seen the first Excel warehouse video that I've done, this will be a follow on from that, but they are not compulsory to have built your, your warehouse to keep track of your minerals or anything. But I am going to build the job tracking system such that you can later integrate the two together so that you can you can match your, your withdrawals from your warehouse and match that with your job tracking sheet because we will be working on a sheet today that will address maybe tech one frigate manufacturer. Of course, there is so many things that you you could be making in the EVE Online universe, be they modules, rigs, ships, whatever. The constraints in this instance are intentionally quite, quite um, tight so that we can address the concepts of fleshing out your system not so much that not so much that i so that i can build you a system and go hey here's here's the be all and end all more so that we can say hey here's the concept and then you personally can go away and and make a bespoke solution to address your own challenges or problems so in the other videos i have been zoomed out a fair bit and i'm sorry for that if it was visually um, straining. I'm going to zoom in a bit more hopefully so that you can uh, see what is going on. Now so if you haven't, if you're not going to build on from your warehouse sheet you are going to go up into the top left hand corner, file, new, blank workbook and get on with it that way. But in this instance I am building on from the warehouse sheet in which case I've already got a workbook open. A workbook being a series of worksheets. So I'm going to go down to the bottom here. I'm going to start uh, create a new sheet by on this by clicking on this new sheet button down there now I'm working in office 365 I don't know I think this is probably like Excel 2016 or something um, but the latest version of Excel now let's get started straight away so the goal being today that we are going to have a bunch of separate jobs actually let, let me restate that the goal being of this worksheet that we can create jobs individually and keep track of their process and the costings that have gone into that job independently. Okay, so what does that mean? We need to have our job codes. 
so that everything, every every single job that we do, we can log and then recall that information later. We're going to need the particulars so that we can set out our jobs independently. So we're going to have the month in which it, we, we submitted the job or planned for the job. So we're gonna go month. And then we're gonna go race, class, tech, name, quantity, and I think that will be enough. Now I am building this all on the fly and we are going to come back to this. So hopefully you guys build this with me and then we are going to come back to it to make it even more flash with cool drop down lists, all this kind of stuff to make the process of actually inputting your, uh, your jobs as streamlined as possible and hopefully as visually stimulating as possible such that you can you know exactly where you need to input your next entry at a subconscious level almost i guess <laughs> I, i'm i'm no ui designer but but that's hopefully what we will we'll be working on so you have your job code your month race class tech the name of the actual piece is it is it a rifter or is it a magnate the quantity how many are we doing so that's the stuff that that we know we, that we can in input straight away so i'm going to put a little border on the right hand side there just just to give me a bit of a visual cue of that that is that section and it is it's kind of done putting another visual cue next to this job code because that is there so let's say as an example we have the month Let's see, it's January, it was a brand new year a couple of days ago, so anyway. Min Mata, class, frigate, tech one, name, rifter. Okay, and how many are we building? We are going to make 50. So in this next section, we are going to account for all the costs that might come up when it comes to this manufacturing of of the job okay let's say we have the blueprint cost now in this instance of course it's going to be zero for the it's going to be zero for the rifters because we will be manufacturing from a bp and a, a bpo hopefully you've gone and bought your bpo and you've researched it a bit for me i don't like keeping track of the the blueprint costs unless it is a blueprint copy the manufacturing cost let's call that the m the man cost <laughs> the cost of being a man um no i don't like that <laughs> manufacturing there so that's the job cost when we actually go to submit that job in the in the thing so if we come if you come to your your manufacturing here and then what if we actually came to the rifter and it was we were we were doing 50 what would that mean so the so the job cost being the total job cost down here in uh, so let's say let's fill these values out as we go just to kind of so that you've got a sense of what they all mean so if we were doing this 50 rifter run in this citadel it would the manufacturing cost would be 254,168 so the next element that we are going to keep track of here is going to be the pre-made element so actually uh, let's 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 say let's think scalability down the track when we need to address that we are building tech two parts as well so let's say component componentry cost now of course there is not going to be any componentry cost when it comes to a rifter because we are dealing in minerals but what we do want to do we do want to integrate this with our warehouse so we're going to go minerals what is the minerals cost okay because this is going to to later integrate down into the warehouse there anyway so the next part that we are going to do is is the pre-bought elements so well i'm going to say hub i'm going to say hub one and hub two hub being maybe your jita rens the dixie 
or a ma. So where do you buy the extra stuff that you that you don't necessarily have on hand that it is easier to purchase from the market than it is to go and manufacture yourself? Of course, the goal being that you manufacture as much as you can by yourself, thus eliminating the middleman or the middlemen such that you get to the, the final price and have cut costs. Okay, so that's pretty much it in terms of 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 the total costs that we are doing here. Now what I'm going to do, now we're going to get into some formulas really quickly because we need to know total costs. We need to know the total cost because this is a manufacturing cost that pertains to 50 rifters, not one rifter. And if there was a BP cost, we we do BP costs per run, not, not for the overall. So what we are going to do here, I'm going to say that, yeah, let's, th this is a bit of a section. So I'm going to border that off. Componentry is going to be zero. The minerals cost, we will look into that later. Hub, I didn't buy anything and I didn't buy anything from either hub. In this case, let's change the hub two to actually Jita and hub one, let's say Amar. Let's say that we, we are based in Amar or some systems outside of Amar that we purchased most of our stuff over there. Okay, so total costs. Total costs is going to be uh, BP costs, so the, the BP costs plus the manufacturing costs plus plus the hub costs. So we're going to do the BP costs here first. So total total BP. Now, this is again because we are we are dealing BP cost per run and not overall. We need to do some some sums here. So we're going to go equals BP cost. Oh, actually, let's do quantity. So I'm going to select that cell G2. I'm going to make that absolute by pressing F4 until this uh, dollar sign appears before the letter. So column G, and then we're going to go times by the BP cost here. Again, absolute in the in the letter. So in the column. So that's now a that's now a formula. What if every BP cost me 20 ISK to do 20 to do 50 things? The overall BP cost is going to be 1000 because it is 50 50 reef rifters each one having a BP cost per of 20 ISK. Yeah, does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. And that's the total BP cost is going to be 1000. We could put this all in one formula, which maybe we will do. Now the, the costs of uh, other, so we are going to do uh, a cool sum here, equals sum, very simple, manufacturing componentry, minerals, Amar and Jita. Amidst adjacent cells, no, that's fine. Okay, we'll come back and do formatting later. So what did I just do? I did a sum function, which actually, what, what sum does, it um, sums everything that, it, that you specify. So I specified to sum everything in from I2 to M2, okay? I'm going to press enter and that comes to 25,400, uh, 25, Now, obviously that is not the, the cost of the rifters because there would be some sort of mineral cost. And let's say that it looks something like 14 million to make 50. So 14, 14 million. And so the other cost now is actually at 14 million. What we're gonna quickly gonna do now, back through the BP cost, the manufacturing, the componentry, the minerals, Amar, Jita, BP. We are actually going to change all these values in the formatting up to this uh, accounting number format, like that. Actually, no, we're not. We're gonna go just commas. And we are going to reduce the decimal count to that. So now we've got some nice little commas there. All I did was go up to that little section there, change the format by pressing on the comma style. Okay. Now, 
and back to where we were. So we've got a total BP cost and then we've got the cost of everything else. Now that means that the total cost is those two together. So the BP cost plus the other costs and that gives us the total costs going into this, into this job, okay? We're going to use our sum function again. Anything in the formula bar up the top there, if you do need to enter a function and not a value, you start that with an equal sign. I'm gonna say sum, I'm gonna press tab to do this thing. Now it's asking for the conditions or the arguments. I don't know what is a condition or argument. I don't know. Anyway, so it's asking for the, the values that we are going to fill in. So number one is going to be N2. And then I'm gonna put a little comma for to, to go on to the next argument. Um, condition, whatever. Mm. Anyway, the total cost. And then I'm gonna close that off with another bracket. And I'm gonna do that. So now we have the total cost of manufacturing 50 rifters if the minerals cost 14 million isk is going to be that. So that's the total costs there. Now, Let's do a very, a very quick little wrap up on that section before we go and move on to the process. So we have the particulars of the job, the January, the Mimitar frigate, we did tech one and it was rifters and we did 50 of them. Each one cost us 20 isk in terms of the BP element. We are paying off our blueprint or whatever, where blueprint copies, anyway. And then the manufacturing cost was 254,000 when we submit that job. Have we submitted it? Who knows, not important because all we need to know is at the moment, how much will it cost when we go to do it? The componentry, obviously no components go into a tech one ship. The mineral cost, let's, we estimated that it came out at about 14 million. We bought nothing in Namar to, to make up the difference and we bought nothing in Jita. So in our totals column here, the total blueprint cost that would have been accrued for doing 50 at 20 isk per is 1000 isk. The other costs is this manufacturing cost plus everything else, plus componentry, plus minerals, plus Amar, plus Amida, uh, <laughs> plus Jita. And that comes to 14,255,168 isk. You know what, I'm gonna leave it there. We are going to do a part two and I'm going to pick up straight from where we left off here today. Move out.